He's going to give you a three, two, one, and then go. Good morning. As pastor of the Brian Baptist Church, I welcome you to our first Sunday morning live stream service. We have been having a few live streams, but this is our first Lord's Day service. And so as pastor, I want to welcome you to it today. Uh, I hope that many of you were watching earlier this morning. Our social pastor, Brother Aaron Mitchell, brought a tremendous lesson. And if you missed it, you missed it there. But uh, and then tonight at six o'clock, Brother Jan Linderman will be preaching for us. He's a, 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 a sort of a semi-retired preacher from Michigan. And you will need to tune in for that on it there. For just a moment before we get into the Word of God, uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of those who have made this live stream possible. Uh, for Brother Mark Zair with A to Z Computers, he ha has really took hold and, and helped us get on the air. Uh, and we appreciate his guidance and his input. And then for uh, <clears throat> Brother David Morse, who is our operating agent, uh, the technical man, I guess you would say, we appreciate him and all the work that he's doing to keep this thing on the air in it. So anyway, this morning, I think Brother Aaron mentioned my wife, Betty, <clears throat> excuse me, took a fall, but uh, it was nothing serious. Uh, she had fallen in a, in a position that she could not get up, and I had to rush home. And she's fine. She's doing well. Uh, no, no real damage. Elbow was cut a little bit, but uh, she's in good spirits, and she wanted me to come on and have the service there. In it. Then before I begin the message this morning, I'd like to say a few words about our church for those who possibly are w watching us for the first time. So to get acquainted with us, uh, you're, you've already saw what our Bible class is. But just let me say this. Brian is an old-fashioned, traditional Baptist church. We're independent Baptists. We sing the old hymns from the hymn book. We teach and preach from the old King James Bible, which we believe is the true preserved word of the living God. We're a warm loving church family here at Berean. If you're looking for a church that still worships in the traditional way, I hope you'll consider visiting us. Uh, we're located at 17377 Godwin Avenue here in Port Charlotte. And when this uh, pandemic is all over and we get back to worshiping with a lot of our people, we hope you might visit us. We'd look, we'd, it'd be a joy to meet you and get acquainted with you there, uh, if you would. Take your Bibles this morning, if you will, uh, if you're watching, and maybe you have your Bible. If not, will you listen to the Word of God? I direct your attention to Matthew 21, and we will begin reading with Matthew 21, verse 1 through 11. <clears throat> the Bible says, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethany, unto the Mount of Olives. Then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied, and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. And this was done, that it might be fulfilled, was just spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and setting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him there on. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way, Others cut down branches from the trees and strew them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, 
saying, Hosanna is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into the Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. In this passage of Scripture, as you well know, we're introduced to the beginning of the last week of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ here on this earth, uh, on it. Uh, in a few days, he would be volunteering his life, laying it down upon an old wooden cross where he would shed his precious blood for your sin and for mine. And these scriptures says, uh, and, and indicates that this was a tremendous, glorious occasion in the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We, we are, are the, approaching it today because this is Palm Sunday. And this is where we get this term, Palm Sunday. Uh, some look at, call it the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. Well, I want to say this morning, it was more than just a triumphal entry. Oh, hear me this morning. This was a royal entry where the Lord Jesus Christ was openly recognized and received by the Jewish people as the King of kings and the Lord of lords and the God of gods uh, therein. What a day that must have been some 2,000 years ago. I try to picture it in my mind. Jesus had sent for a coat, they, they, a, a, a small donkey, and they had brought it to Jesus. He was up on the Mount of Olives. They put him on that little donkey, and he began to make his way down to the city of Jerusalem. There's a path that goes from the, from the mountain down to the city. And he began to make his way down with his disciples. And as he departed from the mountain and went down into the city, the Bible says multitudes. Uh, some, I've read, said it could have been in the thousands. You see, it was uh, the day of uh, celebrating the Sabbath or the Passover, excuse me, the Passover. And so there were a multiplicity of people in Jerusalem at this hour. But Jesus, here's Jesus making his way down uh, from that mountain to the city of Jerusalem, and this great crowd of people begin to throng about him. And as they're getting close to the city, they some of them take off their garments, and they throw it down in front of him. Some of them grab some palm leaves and begin to spread it out before him as he makes his way into the city uh, there. You might say they made him that day a royal carpet. So I want to uh, preach this morning on the subject, the path or the road to royal redemption uh, on it there, uh, on it there. Notice, if you have your Bibles, the Bible says they not only begin to put down their clothing, not only begin to throw down the palm leaves, but they begin to cry out, Hosanna, praise God, Hosanna, to God be the glory. And as they were doing this, I want to direct your attention to this morning to verse 10 of Matthew 21. It says then, as he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was, uh, all of the city was moved saying, who is this? Who is this? And then I want you to notice the response that they got, verse 11. And the multitude said, this is Jesus the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee uh, on it there. Oh, I just try to imagine this moment in the life of Jesus. Here he is being exalted. Here he is being lifted up by the crowd that day. Here he is uh, uh, being proclaimed as their king of kings and lord of lords and god of gods. But I want you to notice something. 
this same crowd, I'm going to show you, on Palm Sunday, who was praising him, exalting him, crying out to him, uh, 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 Hosanna, praise God. This same crowd, three days later, was crying out, crucify him. This same crowd, on, on Palm Sunday, they were praising him, glorifying him. But on Wednesday, and by the way, that's the day he was crucified, was Wednesday. The traditional Good Friday stuff, is <laughs> that's tradition. That's not Bible. Amen. But <clears throat> this crowd, this is what I want to get this morning as we think about the royal road to redemption. This crowd that was coronating him on Palm Sunday was crying out three days later, crucify him. They had went from coronation to crucifixion uh, therein. Uh, on it. That, I began to think, what was it that caused the, such a drastic change in their attitude toward Jesus? One day they were praising him. The next day they were condemning him. One day they were glorifying him. And the next day, they wanted to crucify him. What changed from Palm Sin Sunday to Wednesday morning? I believe the answer is here. You notice in Matthew 21, verse 10, and it says, And when, they were, they, when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And they an somebody answered, the multitude uh, said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Here is the, why, the, why one day they were, were glorifying him, and the next day they were wanting to crucify him. Is because, hear me this morning, they missed who Jesus really was. They cried out say, uh, uh, saying, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth. That's true to a certain extent. But may I say to you this morning, this Jesus, 2,000 years ago that made this trip from, Mount, from the uh, top of the mountain down to the city of Jerusalem, this Jesus was more than a prophet. We're going to look at that in just a moment uh, on it. But my point is this morning, they failed to recognize who Jesus was. Who is this man? Who is he that's causing all this commotion? Who is he that's riding this donkey and they're throwing their coats down and the palms down and praising him. Who is he? Well, they answered, but it was, let me, let me say to you this morning, it was the wrong answer. It was the wrong answer. You see, that was why three days later they were willing to crucify him. They missed on Palm Sunday who Jesus really was. Uh, on it there, uh, there. And so the issue this morning is the same as it was 2,000 years ago today. And that issue is simply this. Who is this one that rode into Jerusalem that day 2,000 years ago? Who is he? And I want to tell you this morning, the world gives almost the same answer they gave back then. And in giving that answer that he was just a prophet uh, that was among the people, when they answered that, they missed who he was, and not knowing who he was, then they were willing, where they were willing to coronate him, three days later, they were willing to crucify him. It's, in Bible, it's amazing. They were crying out, Hosanna to the highest, to God be the glory. Crying out. But if you turn in your Bible a little ways, you'll find that uh, a, a few days later, they were crying out, Crucify him, crucify him. And it was the same crowd 
that was there on Palm Sunday on it. Who is this man? Well, there's a lot of opinion this, even today about who Jesus is. You know that? <laughs> uh, uh, some saw him as a godly man. I'll give you some scripture. John 3, 1 and 2. There were those who looked upon him that he was a godly man. And even his enemies would, uh, said, said, we find no fault in him. He was a godly man. There's no doubt about that. And then there are those who saw him as a gifted teacher. You find in Luke 20, 21, uh, they, 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 they called him master teacher. And truly he was the greatest teacher that ever lived. Amen. But others, they saw him uh, as this crowd did. They saw him as a great prophet. Uh, they, they were familiar with the prophets uh, there uh, on it. And all of these things were true about Jesus. I'm not despairing these things. Hear me again. He was a godly man. He was a, he was a gifted teacher. He was a good example. And he was a great prophet. But he was far more than all of these. For I want to say this morning, if these things are all that you know about Jesus, you have missed, as they did, who he is. And this world this morning is, are, are still missing who Jesus really, really is. Who is this? Well, I'm gonna, let's look into God's word this morning. I'll try to answer that question biblically. Your opinion this morning of who Jesus is doesn't amount to anything. <laughs> my opinion, if I, if I, of what my opinion is about Jesus, whatever it is, opinion does not matter. It's what God's word says about him that, that identifies him exactly who he is. So I want us to look at this, uh, some scripture this morning that identify who Jesus is. Not only was that day, but Jesus is the same today. Hear me this morning. He's the same today as he was in that day. He won't come down that mountain. But they missed it. They missed it. They didn't recognize. They didn't realize who it was on that glorious Palm Sunday morning. So may I on this Palm Sunday morning share with you three truths of what of what the whom the bible says that jesus really is uh there so if you got your bibles or if you, you listen to me let me say first of all this one that was descending down that mountain two thousand years ago he was the begotten perfect son of god they missed it. He was the begotten, perfect Son of God. Now let me say this this morning. This is the foundation of everything we believe. If you do not believe that, there's no possible way for you to ever get saved. Brother Aaron's been touching on that in the Bible class. On it. Uh, false teachers and false doctrine and uh, false preaching uh, there. Uh, no, no. Jesus was more than just a prophet. He was more than just a good man. He was more than just a great teacher. Oh, listen, he was more than a, a good example. But who was he? He was the only begotten son of the living God. Amen. Let me share some Bible with you. Look, we're in Matthew. Go back to Matthew chapter 16. And let's, let the Bible testify about Jesus. Matthew 16, verse 13 uh, through 16. Jesus himself uh, asked his own disciples almost the same question. He asked them and said, Whom do men say that I am? Look at this, what the Bible says. When Jesus, this is Matthew uh, uh, 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, 
he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? There it is. Who am I? And they said, look, look what, they missed it. They actually missed it. And they said, some said that thou art John the Baptist. Actually, they were quoting what they'd heard. Some, you're Elias, that was a prophet. And others, Jeremiah, or you're one of the prophets. Now, he was, <laughs> he was one of the prophets. There's no doubt about that. The Bible says that he was. And all of that. But listen to this. He, uh, he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And I want you to notice the answer of, of Peter in verse 16. He said, And Simon answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. That is the answer uh, to who this man is uh, there. Uh, uh, let me give you another scripture. Go to the Gospel of John. Chapter 1, uh, just a few verses. John 1, 14. Listen to this. I'm, I'm preaching on you this morning. Who, Je who is Jesus? He's the only begotten Son of the living God. And here in John chapter 1, uh, uh, verse 14, we read this. The Bible says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, what does that mean? For it says, and he, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Chap, uh, verse, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the same was in the beginning. And the word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. Jesus was the incarnate son of the living God. That's who he, he was uh, there. But let me say on this Palm Sunday, <laughs> there's multiplicity of people who still do not know who Jesus is. Uh, uh, right there. Oh, uh, the word begotten. It, all, uh, it's used several times in describing the Lord Jesus Christ. And that word is a summation of both his deity and his humanity. Uh, uh, there, yeah. So, who is this? Well, this man was the begotten Son of God. And, he, and the Bible says, being such, he was God in the flesh. Amen. He was God who walked on this earth in the form of, Je of his son, Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to show you something. This right here, by missing that, by not knowing who Jesus really was, this is the reason why they tried and finally concede, uh, completed killing him. I want you to take your Bibles, if you will, and I want you to look, uh, if you will, to be John 10, chapter 33. I, I want you to get this. Here's the reason they cried out a few days later uh, after, try, after praising him and glorifying him, and then just a few days later, crucify him. Crucify him. Here's the reason. They missed who he was. Notice, if you will, John 10, verse 33. John 10, verse 33. The Bible says, The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not. We're not going to, hey, they said, We're not going to kill you because of your work. They, they thought, they, they, they conceded he was a good man. They, they conceded he was a good teacher. They called him rabbi, master, uh, and all of that. And yet, they wanted to crucify him. And here's the reason why. But he said, "But they said we're not. We're not going. We don't want to kill you uh, for your work, but for blasphemy, because th that thou, being a man, 
maketh thyself God. They missed that. Oh, folks that are listening in this morning by internet, do you know who Jesus is? Do you realize that he was and is the incarnate son of God and that walked this earth and as such, he was God on earth. Now, oh, yes, he was all man. There's no doubt about that. Uh, somebody put it like this. As God, he was deity. As a man, he was divine. As God, he was perfect. As a man, he was sinless. He, he quote both of them, as, but he had to be sinless to be perfect, but uh, as God, as God, he he's uh, he was, you know, he was uh, he was sovereign. He was perfect. As as he walked this earth, he was sinless. And so you find three things, and these three things are just as prevalent today as they were when Jesus made that trip down the mountain. You find because they missed who Jesus was. Number one, they rejected. His teaching. You find this in Matthew 21, 23. We can look at that real quick. We're almost there. 21, 23. Notice what it says. I'll get her in a minute. They rejected his teaching. Look, listen to this. It says in, in Matthew 21, 23, And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching. They rejected his teaching. They came unto him saying, By what authority dost thou teach these things? They did not believe what he was teaching because they did not believe he had the authority to teach what he taught. But I want to tell you, the Bible says that he was the living word described in the written word. So they rejected his, they rejected his teaching. Not only that, John 8, 45, you find this. They, uh, I'll be there in a minute. I want to share something with you. They not only rejected his teaching, but in, in John 8, 45, they refused his truth. You, write, you find this in uh, John 8, 45. Hey, look at this. And because I tell you the truth, because I tell you the truth, ye believe not uh, there. They, they, they did not believe what he was teaching. They, and, of course, they did not believe that he, he had told them on various occasions that he was God in the He let it be out. He was God in the flesh. But they did not believe it. They missed it. And then in John 8, 47, they ridiculed his testimony. Look what it says. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a, a Samaritan? He wasn't a Samaritan. And hast a devil. You see, they just didn't want anything to do with what he was teaching. And may I say this morning, that's the attitude of the world. Is it not? The world today, this Palm Sunday, they reject his teaching. They refuse his truth. And they ridicule his testimony or his followers. Everywhere we go, every uh, out into this uh, vicinity, and we visit, and we knock on doors, we find those that ridicule and mock and make fun, saying they want nothing to do with this Lord Jesus. Oh, listen. If you miss this, that he was the incarnate, the only begotten Son of God, you miss it. You miss it all. There, there's no other place to go on it. So, who is this? He is God's only begotten Son. That's who He is. 
Let's look at the second thing they missed. Coming down from that mountain, he was not only God's perfect son, but he was the world's promised Savior. John chapter 4, listen to this, if you will, uh, verse 40 and 42. Uh, <clears throat> Here we go. And it says, and many more believed because of his own word. There were some that did believe his word. That's the same today. There are those who believe it and reject it. But notice verse 42. And he said unto the woman, now we believe, not because thou said, uh, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Oh, <laughs> listen. He not only was the only begotten Son of God, but He was and is the promised Savior of the world. May I say this this morning? There, there is no other way. There is no other person. There is no other teaching. There is no other belief. There is no other doctrine that will get you into heaven short of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, on it there. You know, Jesus said himself, I believe Brother Aaron mentioned this in his message this morning. Jesus said this himself uh, in, in Matthew, that in the last days, false Christ would arise and deceive many. And I concur with what he was teaching this morning. We're living, and sad as it is, we're living in a generation of deceived people. They're being deceived on every hand. And the thing that troubles me is not only are they being deceived, as Jesus said, by false prophets, false teachers, false doctrine, but they're, they are also being self-deceived. They're fooling themselves into believing something that is not true and will not get them to heaven, but they, they believe in this. What I'm trying to say is this. Any doctrine or teaching that denies that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, that is a false doctrine. Any on it. Why? Because Jesus, I quote himself, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no man, no one cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. That, ought, that should settle it. But Satan has raised up all of these side roads, all of these side tracks, telling men how they can get to heaven by, uh, and neglect the cross and neglect the blood and, and all of it. No, they're deceived by those who we, would be classify as false Christ, false teachers, false doctrines that try to point. I've heard, you've heard this. I've heard it a thousand times as pastor. Well, preacher, we're all going to heaven, but we're just taking different roads to get there. Well, let me say something. You take your road if you want to, but I'm going to take the royal road of Jesus Christ and him as the son of God, and I'm going to stay on that road. Amen. He said, Jesus said this. He said, this, well, what this means is, he says, I'm the way. There is no other way. There is no sidetrack. There is no detour. It's one way or it's no way, period. And then he said, well, I'm not only the way, but I'm the truth concerning salvation. You cannot, you cannot, uh, uh, Peter said in the book of Acts, hear me now, Jesus, or Peter said, there is, that neither is there salvation in any other name. That's, that should settle it. Folks, what I'm trying to say this morning, it's Jesus or it's nothing. Amen. 
What I'm trying to say this morning, it's Jesus and heaven or, if, or it's hell forever. Sad to say uh, on it there. Do, don't be deceived this morning. Don't be led astray. Don't be deterred off of the way, the truth, and the life, which is Jesus Christ. Because there is no other way. They missed it. They missed it. Jesus was the fulfillment of the prophets. I have that uh, down. It's, it's in uh, Zechariah. Uh, I believe. I think I've, I got it down here somewhere. But in Zechariah, he prophesied about Palm Sunday. And Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. Oh my, they, they, that generation of Jesus had, had, had conjured up every kind of uh, way to, to, we'll say save, they, they didn't know what that was about, but in order to get to God, they had conjured up all kinds of ways to get to God. And Jesus comes along and says, no. I'm the world savior. Somebody says, preacher, but how about the Old Testament saints? How they got saved? Jesus is not mentioned in the Old Testament. Well, we won't get into that. I can prove he is. But, but the Bible teaches that he, that we, those, the cross is a dividing point. The cross is it. You can't escape the cross. The Old Testament saints were on one side of the cross. We New Testament saints on another side. The cross is the middle. Those Old Testament saints look forward to the cross. The prophets prophesied it. The, the Bible teaches it. They look forward to the coming of the Messiah, the Son of God. We look back. Now they look forward by faith. They hadn't, they were just, the prophets would just prophesy about it, but they believed it. And by faith, the Old Testament saints were saved just like we who look back to the cross this morning and we're saved by faith. Amen. So you can't get around it. He was and is the designed. savior of this world there is no other way there is no other path that you can go to get to heaven they missed it who is this oh he's just a prophet he's just a teacher <clears throat> someone uh, somewhere in the bible it says and i can look it up some of them said why this is uh jesus the the son of joseph he's a carpenter's son that's all he is if you deceive yourself into believing that stuff, you'll end up in a devil's hell. Oh, he, who is he? He's the world's savior. But let me close this morning by saying, descending from that mountain, he is not only God's begotten son, he is not only the world's savior, but he became the payment for our sin. Amen. That was what it was all about. Palm Sunday, Jesus was on the way to the cross where he voluntarily laid down his life upon that cross. No man took it from him. He voluntarily laid down his life and sacrificed his shed blood for as a payment for your sin and for mine. That's who he was. The Bible says he was God's lamb slain before the foundation of the world, preordained by God him, the Father himself, that one day his only begotten son would come into this world and be the savior of the world, and lay down his life and, 
and shed his blood for all the world. Listen. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved all the world that he gave his only begotten son. There's that word again. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. I want to conclude by saying, emphasize on this. Please hear me. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that saves us. But, uh, uh, I mean, he, that's the payment, of course. Now, what, try to, I, I, I find folk get mixed up with this. His blood is sufficient to save anyone who will receive him. His blood sufficient. The Bible says it was shed once and for all. It's, it's sufficient. But not it, it, but it's not it will not save those who will not believe in him. It's sufficient to, it could. But if you have not received him as your Lord and your Savior, repented of your sin, called upon him as, as your Lord and Savior, the blood is of no effect to you until you receive it yourself. I like the songs we sing around here. We've got that one, uh, uh, Nothing But the Blood. No, I'll tell you, we, I like that song on it. Uh, Hebrews 9.29, what's it say? That without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin on it there. So, uh, the question is, have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? You see, religion, it might uh, cover your sin uh, a little bit by, by you, know, you know, but listen, the blood of Jesus Christ, well, actually in the Old Testament, uh, when they came to the altar and, and, and gave their pigeon, their dove, their uh, uh, turtle dove, whatever it was, when they came to God's altar in the Old Testament and, and laid that up on the altar, that covered their sin, but it did it temporarily. They had to bring that offering every day, uh, excuse me, every year, and repeat it over and over again. Why? It only covered their sin. But my Bible tells me, hallelujah, Jesus Christ cleanses us from our sin. Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Just like that song says there. I want to say this morning, <clears throat> you can't earn your salvation. Matthew, uh, uh, Matthew uh, 19, verse 16. I want the Bible to speak. Don't listen to Brother Carden. Listen to what Jesus says. <clears throat> Matthew 19, you, uh, you, uh, verse 16. You cannot earn your salvation. Let's see what the Bible says. Look, at it, it's, it, it's, well, it's a long story, but it says, And behold, one, one came unto him and, and said, Good master, what good thing shall I do? What good thing can I do that I may have eternal life? Now, if you read the whole account, you'll get the full story. This was a young man. Well, seemingly very, he must have been very rich. He was, and I, he was, and I, I really believe this. He was a very moral, upright man uh, there. Uh, I, I really believe that he, he did try to live what he said he tried to live. But he had all the money he had, he could not purchase one moment in heaven. You see, uh, on it there. Uh, that, that, he's, this is known the rich young, young ruler. He, he, you, he, could, he couldn't earn it. He, what, he said, what can I do to do? What can I do? Hey, the only thing you can do it's what God said we need to do. And that is receive the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts by repenting of our sin, calling upon Him, and believing that He is the risen Son of God. Amen. You can't earn your salvation. You, you, can't, you can't work for it. How do you know? Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. 
For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's not of works, lest any man should boast. If you could work for your salvation, or I'm up here preaching, and this is, I, say, I could say, well, I'm working, my, this is, uh, I'm trying to get saved. If that were the case, every one of us would be uh, in, in competition, we'd be doing our best. We'd be, I'd be trying to beat out Brother Aaron, and he'd be trying to beat me out, and Brother, they, no. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of works. You cannot work your way to heaven. Can I have an amen? And then 1 Peter 1, 18, I've got to read this. <clears throat> you cannot, no way, no how. Can you purchase your salvation? I hope you get this because this is my last point. First Peter 1 Peter 1.18 For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, you, 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 uh, you, there's no way. As silver and gold, you can't buy it. You can't purchase it. From your vain conversation received by the tradition of men. If you're following this morning the tradition of some church or uh, some priest or some pro uh, pope or whatever it is, if you're following the tradition of men, you're going to die and go to hell. Notice what he says. Here's how you get it. But in verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish, and without spot, who verily was ordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last days for you. There's not enough, there's not enough gold in Fort Knox. There's not enough money in all of the thousand banks in America. Not enough to buy your salvation. Why? I, I, when I'm in, in preaching to a real crowd, I jump around a lot. I'm trying to hold down here to the pulpit. But I want to tell you that excites me and that thrills me. And I say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, because as the song said, Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe. He paid it. The penalty's been paid. Wow. On that day, he made his way down that dusty path from the Mount of Olives to the Eastern Gate. From that day to, to this, he, he was on his way to the cross to offer himself as the Lamb of God to be sacrificed upon the cross that his blood might Flow down that cross as a payment for your sin and for mine. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Who is this? They missed it. Oh, they were praising him. They were lifting them up. They were crying out, Hosanna in the highest. Glory to God. But three days later, they were crying out again. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Why? Because they missed who Jesus was. Was. And I say to you this morning, the world in general has missed who Jesus is. Just like it was 2,000 years ago. Oh, there are those who give consent to him, and there are those who say, yeah, he was a good master, or a good teacher. I've had people say, yeah, he was a good person. 
Now, he was a good example, and he was. But unless he becomes your own personal Lord and Savior, you will have missed the point. And by that, you have, might have missed heaven. For Jesus said again, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Do you know, out there, wherever you might be this morning, do you know who Jesus is? Have you received Him as your personal Savior? Has there ever been a time in your life that you have knelt before Him, confessed your sin in repentance of that sin, and asked Jesus to come into your heart, and by faith you receive Him as the begotten Son of God? If you have not, I urge you, you call, call our church. We've got folk. I, I will, Brother Aaron will. We will meet with you and talk with you because, listen, folks, your destiny is determined by what you know who Jesus is. Your eternal destiny depends if whether or not you know who Jesus is. I trust that you will do that. We're going to pray. Just before we pray, I have an announcement that must be made. One of our precious men, one of the fellows that does a lot of our uh, yard work, uh, Brother Don Moore, the other day, he just a couple days ago, he had a great fall. And he uh, burst at least three ribs pretty well crushed his shoulder all, all to pieces. Of course, got hit on the head, banged up around the knees. He was, he, as far as I know, he's still there, but he was, he's in the hospital in Punta Gorda, Bayfront. And as we pray this morning, two prayers. If you do not know Jesus as your personal Savior, I pray for you this morning. And then also we will pray for Brother Don and his wife, Pat. He's going to be a good while recovering from this. He's going to need your prayers. Some of you on Facebook already have heard about it. But do pray for Don and Pat. I can also say, as of this moment, not a one of our church family has come near having the, the virus. Praise God. I believe God's in control of this thing. And I believe God will take care of His people. So anyway, I trust that you'll know this Christ. You'll know Him. Not just as another prophet. Not just as another good man. Not just as another example. Not just as a great teacher. But I pray this morning, you will know Him as your personal Lord and Savior. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this beautiful Lord's Day that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, that we still have the opportunity to preach the Word of God. We thank you for the Bible lesson that was preached this morning. God, I pray that you'll take this message as stumbling and humbling as it is. God, that some way you might speak to hearts this morning that do not know you, they, they're like that bunch 2,000 years ago. They do not know who Jesus is. No, oh God, I pray that somehow, some way, by the grace of God, you would lead someone to share the gospel with them. We do pray for Brother Don and Pat. Oh, God, I pray that you touch them and put thy hand upon them. And I pray, God, because I believe you could do it. There could be a swift healing, even quicker than what the doctors might say. So, Lord, we put Brother Don and Pat in, in your watch care. May you watch over them and comfort them. And then, Father, we pray for our church family during this pandemic. We pray, God, that 
You'll watch over all of our people as well as all others. But, Lord, we pray that you will watch over our flock. Keep them safe. Keep them close to you. Keep them in the Word of God. We pray, Lord, that they, and that, and that they will pray for each other and for the church and for me and, and pastor. So, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, because I know who Jesus is. I have no doubts whatsoever. And I have the confidence that 2,000 years ago, that one that rode that donkey down that mountain into the city of Jerusalem, that he was and is the only begotten son of the living God. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we ask it. Amen. God bless you so much.